liberty means anything at all, it means the right to tell people what they do not want to hear, said George Orwell after writing 1984. The right to freedom of speech is central because it is the right we use to defend all of our other rights. You might be sitting there wondering, why should I listen to some 17-year-old talk to me about my basic human rights? I mean, don't we live in a free society? You're not wrong. Why should you listen to a 17-year-old talk to you about anything at all? <coughs> but the fact of the matter is, I'm a big fan of free speech, and I'm sure all of you are too. I'm sure all of you cherish free speech as much as the next person. And we've all been in those situations where we've been in arguments and to the other person we're like, oh, this guy's such a moron, can't he shut up? It's even gotten so bad that we would want to wrap our hands around their throats, they're so stupid. But the fact of the matter is, I've noticed today that we need to remind ourselves that listening to each other is the most important part of being connected, internationally minded, and diplomatic. And it's important to listen to opinions and facts that you may not agree with and would want to shut, shut yourselves off from, to silence the opposition, to make them unheard. I remember being taught in history class about governments from 82 years ago that would purposefully take away these freedoms and so many other freedoms simply to gain more power. But they would hide this ulterior motive by saying that they merely wanted to keep the interests and safety of their own people. I'm starting to see this happen again today. Excuses such as freedom from the offensive and equality over freedom of speech are being shouted across the rooftops and people are just going along with it like mindless robots, exactly like the old governments. We're going backwards and it's time we did something about this. So first of all, what is free speech? Well, there are many definitions. There's a dictionary definition, many of them. There's a definition created by the United States Constitution. And there's a definition created by the United Nations. But one thing I noticed from researching all these uh, definitions is that they're worded differently. Why is this? Well, let's take a look. This is the Merriam-Webster dictionary definition. Freedom of speech is speech that is protected under the First Amendment to the United States Constitution. Okay, <laughs> what does the United States Constitution have to say about this? The First Amendment. Quite lengthy, I know, but to summarize, what it's basically saying is that all speech, religion, freedom to uh, protest, is protected by law. Now, some of you may be wondering, well, why should I listen to the American rules? I'm not American. And you're right, neither am I. So let's take a look at a more universal definition. This is the definition created by the United Nations uh, for the uh, Universal Charter for Human Rights under Article 19 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And to summarize it, what it's basically saying is that freedom of religion, freedom of opinion, freedom of speech, freedom to protest, and the freedom to access of information is a fundamental human right. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, there are so many definitions and they're worded differently. Which one should I follow? Which one is right? Simple. Follow all of them. Because one thing they have in common, despite their different wording, is that they all share the same message. It's that all speech is protected. The only way to preserve freedom of speech is to protect all speech. Now, a usual question I get asked when talking about this subject is, what about hate speech? And you're right, what about hate speech? Actually, do we even know what hate speech is? 
Does anyone? I'd invite you to look it up on your phone right now. Well, maybe not right now, because I'm up here giving a speech about it, but one thing you'll notice from looking at all these definitions is that there is no definitive or coherent definition for hate speech. Why is this? After all, shouldn't we punish speech that is hateful, that hurts people, and that is damaging? But then the question becomes, how do you define hate? How can you punish something which you can't even define? There's a great quote that goes along with this by a famous French uh, philosopher named Alexis de Tocqueville, and it goes like this. An abstract word is like a box with a false bottom. You may put in it whatever ideas you please and then take them out again unobserved. You can see how this can be applied to the concept of hate speech. Hate being the abstract word, and people can take that abstract word and make of it whatever they please to benefit their own cause. And we've all definitely seen this happen before. But then some of you might be saying, well, just because we can't define hate, it doesn't mean that we can't and shouldn't punish it. Some people would even argue that hate speech is a hate crime, something that is punishable by the law. But I would beg to differ, very much so, because there is a fundamental difference between physically hurting someone and hurting someone's feelings. And trust me when I say that it hurts, because like all of you, I have too been emotionally hurt. I've been bullied. I've been called names. I've been shunned for my beliefs, my values, and even my race. To give you an example, when I was 14 years old, I met an online friend uh, who I became quite fond of and we became quite close. And as we became closer, we started opening up about each other even more. But as time went on, he started becoming suspicious of me. Why? Because I, was ha I happened to be open about my religion. A religion, by the way, that he was not fond of at all. After some more time, he started hating me, literally hating me, and started calling me names like sand monkey, terrorist, uh, even the N-word. And obviously, I don't fit that description. Now, never in my life would I want this foolish kid to go to prison or suffer any kind of legal punishment. You can call me overly merciful, but to literally want someone's entire life to be crumbled under their feet, to be ruined, simply because of something they said, there's nothing more reprehensible in my view. Yet, free speech is under attack today. And it's exactly because of this mentality that spewing out hate is somehow a crime. What I've noticed from researching this is that this is most prominently happening in the Western so-called developed countries of our world. Countries such as Canada, the UK, Australia, New Zealand, the list goes on. Let's take the example of Canada. This is a bill named Bill C-16. It was introduced uh, in, uh, in 2016. Uh, and what it basically does is it protects transgender people and people who are non-binary, people who uh, neither identify as fe a female or male, uh, from hate propaganda and hate speech and discrimination. Now on the surface level, this law sounds okay, right? It's protecting a marginalized group. But when you actually start digging into what this law is doing, it's actually more evil than it sounds. I ask you this, let's say you were in Canada right now and you met a transgendered man, someone who identi uh, someone of the female sex that identifies as a man, and you call that person she. Do you believe 
that you deserve to be legally punished or that you deserve to pay an, an incredibly expensive fine simply for doing that. No? Well, that's exactly what this law does. Because if you accidentally or even intentionally uh, misgender someone, that someone can go to the police, make a report on you, and you will have to pay a fine of up to 1,200 Canadian dollars. Does that sound fair? Not to some people. For example, He's not wrong. It does. He's received both hate and praise. He's been shunned and shamed. Uh, he's been shunned and revered for this. Let's take a more extreme example. This is Lindsay Shepard. Lindsay Shepard was a teaching assistant at Wilfrid Laurier University. One day, Lindsay wanted to show a video of Jordan Peterson speaking about this law in her class. That sounds all right, right? You know, she, all she wanted to do, all her intentions were, was to bring in another perspective to the argument. Later on, Lindsay was brought in by her executives and other members of staff because she was accused of creating a toxic climate in the classroom and later, she was fired from her job. This is what laws like this do. Let's take another example. This is Marcus Meachin. Marcus Meachin is a comedian on YouTube, an offensive one. <laughs> and one day, uh, Marcus decided to play a prank on his girlfriend and also entertain his audience. He wanted to turned the cutest thing ever, his baby pug, into the worst thing ever, a Nazi. And so he <coughs> proceeded to teach his dog to do the Nazi salute at command, simply to make his audience laugh and torture his girlfriend. After several re uh, weeks, two knocks on Meechan's door are heard. Two police officers were waiting outside the door. They took him in with handcuffs and put him in a small cell for a week. After that, he was released, but he had to fight a two year long legal battle against some people who were displeased by his joke. At the end, he did lose the battle, but he didn't go to prison, even though that was on the table at the time. Instead, he had to pay an 800 pound fine. To this day, he refuses to pay that fine. And after that catastrophic event, he's been going around on rallies, making speeches against oppression of free speech and against laws that oppress the freedom of the flow of information, such as Article 13. Now, I'm not asking you to agree with his joke or find it funny. I'm asking you, do you believe that he deserves to be legally punished simply for making a joke? Let's take a more extreme example. An example that all of us can agree is oppression of free speech. A beacon for us to wake up and realize that freedom of speech is under attack today. This is Jamal Khashoggi. Mr. Khashoggi was a columnist for the Washington Post, a Saudi Arabian columnist. He was exiled from his own country because his government didn't like what he said about their institution. He was exiled to Istanbul, Turkey, for many years. And during those years, he's written many books and many editorials and articles regarding free speech and how free speech and the liberation of women can improve the Middle East. One day, Mr. Khashoggi goes into the Saudi Arabian consulate to get some legal papers for an upcoming marriage. 
He never left that continent because he was kidnapped, tortured, murdered, dismembered, and finally thrown into a vat of acid simply because they didn't like what he said. Now, how cruel do you have to be to do that to someone simply because you don't like what they have to say? <coughs> Our world is full of problems. We all know that. But there's no better solution than to all sit down and talk to each other. And one of the biggest problems today is that we're not listening to each other. We're silencing each other. We're even killing each other simply because we don't like what the other has to say. The first step to the collapse of society is to silence those that which we oppose. Thank you.